You're such an asshole! Hey, Holy Old Captain here. We have a pretty funny request uh, from a, a regular client. Uh, he wants a Clary test. I'll just read it and you can see what we're talking about. Hi, Aaron. First of all, I owe you a thank you. My mom died unexpectedly back in February 20th, and I mentioned this to my friends on Facebook. Among the many, many condolences and well wishers, was a brief and simple post from Aaron Clary that pithily said, Sorry, Mark. Believe it or not, that meant a lot to me, and I briefly uh, cracked a smile. You have well over 1,300 friends on Facebook and didn't have to take the time to do that thing. Well, yeah, but it, of the 1,300 friends, how many are active and then how many of them are fake? I finally I, I finally started noticing that those hot girls that I always send, I knew it a while ago, but fuck it, Christ, delete, delete, delete. It's um, That is now why I'm spending most of my time on Facebook. Anyway, answer my question, and I think it's a softball, but apparently either I like giving you money or feel it's worth paying to get answered. Just to settle an argument, the last time I was home visiting friends, the Clary test entered the discussion one evening. However, over the course of the evening, the Clary test started getting applied to TV and movie characters. For example, Indiana Jones is a fucking three. He has a worthless degree in archaeology, no private, private sector experience since he's a teacher, and currently works for the government, also because he's a teacher. Uh, needless to say, you're an asshole because I no longer find Indiana Jones cool. <laughs> The disagreement between my friends and I arose over Captain Kirk. There we go. There we go. Fucking bringing out America's greatest. I think he's a zero, but the argument he's a two or a three. What this would seem to hinge on is whether or not Starfleet counts as the military, in which case not in the government and no private sector experience would seem to not apply. That would also support the argument that graduating from Starfleet Academy is not a worthless degree. This discussion... <laughs> This discussion got heated probably due to alcohol consumption, but it, I can't believe you guys got angry about this. But at any rate, I thought you'd appreciate the Clary test and fictional characters became a serious point of contention at a bar one evening about a month ago in Southern California. I wish I was there. I, I just so wish I was there. A couple of strangers even <laughs> joined the debate and started watching your Clary Test video on their phone. This debate has continued occasionally on our group text messages, and I'd appreciate if you'd settle this argument for us once and for all with a video. Please let us know how much to send, and keep in mind this is a softball question. Yeah, but I still charged for it. I still got paid for it. All right, so let's look at Indiana Jones. The, the Clary Test, let's review it for those who don't know. The Clary Test originally... Its intention was used for me to do just a pro preliminary filtering of political candidates, to, for me to even consider uh, uh, voting for that individual. Right? And then it also turned out to be a pretty good test to determine whether or not you'd even want to have anything to do with a person in your social life, romantic life, etc. So this is, a, this is like a litmus test, not, not the end-all, be-all test, but a pretty good litmus test to judge the quality and caliber of a person or whether or not there's red flags. It is a score from zero to four. You want zero. You do not want points. It's to golf. You want the lowest score possible. And the worst people, or the people who score the worst on us, are typically your lifelong career politicians who are spoiled little brats, say like the Bushes, Obama, Pelosi. Uh, and the ones who've scored zero is Rex Tillerson, uh, old school mafioso type guys like Al Capone and all those guys, people who were honest, honest, worked themselves up, didn't have life handed to them on a silver platter, and uh, had these qualities, characteristics, and traits. So the, th the four questions. One, do you come for money? If you come for money, you get a point. And a lot of people don't like, oh, well, they can't control who they're born to. Shut up. It's just, I've dealt with rich kids Kids who come for money are royal pains in the fucking asses. They're assholes, typically. Not always, typically. It's not a perfect test, it's just a test. But you could statistically assume, just like a really hot chick is going to be a pain in the ass to deal with and dumber than fuck, you can assume a kid that comes for money is going to be a spoiled little cunt. All right? So just, just roll with it. So that's one point. Two, did you major in stupid shit? All right, here's a, love, there's a little bit of gray in this area. There's a, there's a leeway where we can award fractions of points. If you are galactically stupid and major in women's studies, or something where you're just blatantly telling the world, fuck you, I want you guys to support me, so I'm going to major in worthless fucking crap and not learn anything of value to produce, so you guys will have to pay more taxes to support my ass, you get a point. If it's something meh, finance, <sighs> management, you, know, you, you go to school to study hair, you know, okay, that you tried. 
you only get a half a point. But if you're an engineer, computer programmer, you get IT surgeon, or you just plain don't go to college, you start working right off the bat, or you join the military, you don't get a point. All right. Do you have any private sector experience? All right. Did you work in the real world? This is where I think we're going to address Indiana Jones and Captain Kirk. If you have private sector experience, you don't get a point. But also, the public sector, where your life is threatened, where it's a real job. You're not some fucking social worker like, oh, how do you feel about your parents? Oh, here's some money. Oh, I'm a good person. Uh, like police, cops, firefighter, military. So if your life is at risk, like you're doing a real job, uh, then you you are consider you you don't get a point even though you are public sector. That's considered a real job. I guess real job would be a better way to phrase it, as opposed to I am an elementary school teacher. I work 180 days a year. I have summers off, and I'm just so amazing because I love the children. Uh, if you're one of those pieces of shit, you get a full fucking point because it's not a real job. And then what are you doing today? All right. So uh, are you if you're retired, if you're old and retired, you put in your dues, you don't get a point because obviously you're retired. But if you're currently a career politician, you're the vice assistant reserve break, uh, break glass in case of emergency diversity assistant director, you get a point. If you are, um, I don't know, if you're a professor, you get a point. Unless you are again in STEM, like an actual, and you work in the real job. You consult uh, private sector, da, 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 you don't get a point. You're a programmer, you don't get a point. You are a firefighter, you don't get a point. You're a stay-at-home mom, you don't get a point. Raising kids is a royal pain in the ass. So it's, it's basically, it's again, are you a good person? Are you a piece of shit? That's what this question determines, right? So, well, it doesn't determine, it guesses. So let's take a look at Indiana Jones. All right. Indiana Jones does not come from money. If you remember, in the last crusade, him and his dad were living out in the middle of Utah. All right, and uh, they, it was he came from poverty. Dad wasn't rich, so uh, Indiana Jones gets zero points there. Did he major in something worthless? Yes, he did major in something worthless. Archaeology is a worthless degree. However, there is a time scale on this. This was back in. The 1920s, Indiana Jones had to go to college. We're talking today. Back in the olden days, if you went to college, you could, any degree was a good degree. That was going above and beyond the call of duty. So if we were to be intellectually honest in how I've applied the Clary test in the past, Indiana Jones, we maybe, maybe, would give him a quarter point. I'm leaning more towards zero, not because I'm a fan of Indy, uh, but because back in the olden days, going to college was, and, and let's admit it, college was more rigorous back then. It wasn't this fucking mail your dick in and get a fucking stamp of approval on it. I got my fucking degree. I have a degree in English, even though I grew up in an English-speaking country. And your fucking parents put it on the fridge with your other fucking retarded drawings with crayon at the age of 35. Anyway, so uh, I'm only going to go a quarter point for Indiana Jones, because in the 20s, getting a degree actually fucking meant something. All right, so Indiana Jones only has a quarter point so far. What kind of work did he do? Well, he's predominantly a professor, and that's not a real job. Now, you could say going out and getting dart guns blown at you, and snakes, and having the Nazis, that's pretty dangerous and risky, but is that really what your average archaeologist would go through? Or does Indiana Jones put himself in this situation? Or is it just bad luck? See, there's there's an element like uh, to to test the character, the individual. It's what choices did he make, not what unfortunate circumstances happened to him. And so Indiana Jones, it's like okay, he's he's a professor. He's got girls throwing themselves, and this is not a hard job. It's not a real job either. Those who can't do teach, but then he does do. And there is an element of risk, so, okay, you know, finding the Nazis is kind of like being in the military, but, eh, so, you know what, we're going to give him half a point. Um, normally, if he's a regular professor, you get a full point because that's not a real job. But because he puts himself out there and he gets shot and beaten up and, and he's got to take on bald Nazi dudes and, and he, he gets with the truck and everything, he has a harder than average. He puts way... In one day, Indiana Jones puts more effort into his career than, than any... You take all the archaeology professors today and uh, put their real work experience together and that would, that would be like about that much compared to Indiana Jones. So he, he gets half a point for 
for being a professor. And then what is he currently doing today? Well, uh, he's still doing the same thing. You know, this is a fictional character. He's probably dead by now. Uh, he was fighting the communists. He's still going out there doing, eh, eh. Let's go easy on him. Just give him a, like, I don't even think we'll give him a point. I, I, <clears throat> I can't, because he stuck with it. He never became a politician. He never became a parasite. He didn't sit on some fucking diversity board or non-charity or uh, non-profit charity board or NGO board. You know, Indiana Jones has a score of a quarter, a three quarters point. I think I did that right. Let's uh, so we get half a point for his profession, quarter point for his degree. He didn't come from poverty, and I'm not going to award him any points because, in theory, Indiana Jones would not go the parasitic route at the end. He'd probably be retired by now. So Indiana Jones has a pretty good score of three quarters points. All right, let's take Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk does not come from wealth. Uh, family is a broken family, as we saw in whatever J.J. Abrams' latest thing, if you want to call it that movie, um, where he comes from a broken home. He's racing away with the uh, Corvette. He probably doesn't come from wealth. Starfleet Academy is like ROTC. Um, that's a real degree, and he's and, and Starfleet Academy, you're going out there, there's risks, explore beyond the thing, or whatever they say it is, last frontier. You get into fights with Romulans, it's mo very much a naval battle, it's very akin to joining the Navy. Um, so he doesn't come from wealth, he, he has a real degree, um, he is in danger, and he's always getting himself back into danger. Captain Kirk would probably get zero points. Uh, because he's 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 a he's a he's a military man, career military. Uh, that's basically he didn't come from money. Though I'm gonna award him half a point though. Let me explain why. Who the fuck makes it to captain at the age of twelve? He's driving the Corvette, almost goes off the cliff. Fucking um, whoever his commanding officer was. Hey, you're a really great swell guy. Here, become a captain. Hey, I'm a captain now. I don't even have pubes, but I'm a captain. So the fact he became captain so quickly and so young, it, that there's an element of nepotism. In other words, um, God, see all the all the Star Trek nerds know who this guy is, who the captain was. You know what? Let's just look this up. Let's be thorough. Captain Kirk's commanding officer. I'll probably come up with Spock. Come here, you know, James T. Kirk. Fictional character. Da, 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 da. Development. Tiberius. Raised. Starfleet Academy. Defeated the Kobayashi Test. Became uh, Garavik. Is that it? Including his commanding officer, Garavik. Was that the guy? Whatever it's it, he had he had some connections. There was some nepotism. There was some cronyism going on there. I'm giving him half a point because it just it just seemed too easy. Hey, you're a good-looking kid, Chris Pine. Why don't you go command the latest and greatest starship fleet ever? There you go. So I just, it, that just stinks. So even though it's not, he, he would be a technical zero. There's something fishy, and since I'm the creator of the Clary test. Uh, he gets half a point because there's some connections in there, and I'm sure some people who know Star Trek canon would, would, would cr uh, claim otherwise. Certainly make the comments below. Um, but yeah, so Captain Kirk, you, you, in other words, Mark, you are more right than, than your peers. Uh, not that they're wrong or, or bad or anything, but uh, these two guys, when we apply the Clary test and, and its true intent, the intent of the Constitution, these are very good, moral, upstanding guys. You have every right to keep cheering them on and look at them as your heroes. Uh, Kirk and, and Indiana Jones are, are very low-scoring, therefore well-scoring individuals on the Clary test. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that solved the arguments. Hopefully you want to bet or something. If you guys want me to do the Clary test on other fictional characters in American media or history or literature, please go to assholeconsulting.com. And if you have some important questions about your life, maybe too, we, we consult in that department as well. Anyway, I also got some books. You go to Amazon.com, find my books. Bachelor Pad Economics, Curse of the High IQ, Reconnaissance Man, Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty, and Worthless, all available to help out you young kids and old people alike. And then we got the Clary Podcast. You can find that on SoundCloud.com. Just look up the Clary Podcast. We'll catch you kids later. Toodles.